Hey, it's Mr. Turk, and I was going to do kind of a quick walkthrough of how to put together a zine or a small photo book. Um, there's a bunch of different projects where I do this, but basically we usually do a saddle stitch book. And saddle stitch just means there's at least two stitches in the binding. Typically there's staples uh, for most of the projects where we do this you need at least 16 pages and anytime you want to increase or decrease the amount of pages you have to do it in multiples of four because we're printing these on eight and a half by eleven sheets of paper so you can't have five pages because there's no real way to attach that fifth page I don't have book binding glue so multiples of four are acceptable so you could do if you wanted 20 pages by adding another four pages or an extra sheet but a uh, bare minimum is 16 and again if you want to add pages add pages in multiples of four so 20 24 28 okay um, so let's get into InDesign now some of you might have InDesign 2018 this is InDesign 2018 and then some of you might be working with the latest version of Adobe Creative Cloud. InDesign 2021 kind of looks like this. They look pretty much and act pretty much the same. Uh, and I'm going to record this video with InDesign 2018. So just know if you're a 2021 user or you're using some other year that's more up to date. They look pretty much the same for now. So I'm going to minimize this. And when we want to start our file, we want to click create new and enter the specs and all that. But before we even get started, you want to make sure your files are organized and you have somewhere to save your InDesign file. So go to File Explorer and I have everything ready to go in my OneDrive. So in my OneDrive Photography 2 folder here, I have a booklet folder already made. Again, if you don't remember how to make a new folder, click on the new folder button in the home ribbon or this little new folder button over here. Make sure you make a folder for your project file, your InDesign file, right? And your photos. So in this booklet folder, I have my photos that are going to go into my booklet. So if I double click on this folder, you can see here's all the photos I want to put in my InDesign document. And I'm going to save my InDesign document in this folder so that the photos and the InDesign document stay together. InDesign is associative, so they need to stay together. So now I'm going to go back to InDesign. I'm going to click Create New. You can also go to File, New to create a new file. And when we click Create New or File New, you're going to see this window. Um, the template you want to use is in the Print category. So go to the print category and you want to use letter half. Uh, when you click on letter half, you're going to notice that, you know, the, the units is probably set to picas. But I'm just going to switch it to inches really quick just to show you what we're using here. We're using a half sheet of a letter size piece of paper so that we can make a booklet on a regular printer with eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. So this is five and a half inches by 8.5 inches. All right, so we're going to name this just, you know, photo booklet, and we're going to call it version one because I might want to change this and save it as version two. And for now, we're just going to add 16 pages. Okay, we're also going to leave this box right here called facing pages checked, and it needs to be oriented portrait. Okay, and then we don't need to change any of these other settings here. If you want to see what it looks like, you can check the preview box. And I'm going to check the preview box really quickly. And what that does is it basically shows you what the document will look like. So behind this window now, right, it's loading in the document. And that looks right. That looks right. That's a half sheet right there. So I'm going to click Create. And this is InDesign. So InDesign is what you use to make books. If I scroll down, with the scroll bar or my scroll wheel on my mouse. It's like there are three to, f you know, four separate documents here, all in a row. And these are all my pages. 
I'm going to zoom out by hitting the shortcut uh, control and the minus key. And here's my entire book. So here's the cover page, page one, page two, so on and so forth. Okay. So here's my entire book, all 16 pages of it. All right. So to zoom into a page, you can just click on that document and then you can hit control zero. And that's going to zoom in on that page. You can also use the page panel. If you click on the page panel, you can click on a page to jump to that page. So I'm going to double click on the cover here and I'm going to place an image on my cover of my booklet. So to place an image, go to File, Place. And again, the images I want to use are already in a folder in my OneDrive. So I'm going to go to Photography 2, the booklet folder, and my export folder right here. And this is where I'm going to place my photos from, all of the photos in here. So I'm going to put this photo on the cover. So I'm going to select that photo, click Open, and then to place a photo, you can click once or you can click and drag. And I recommend you click and drag. So I'm going to click and drag. And there we go. Okay. I can also add text and give this a title. But before I work on this anymore, I'm just going to explain how associative files work uh, really quick. So I'm going to save my document to that folder. So I'm going to go File, Save As. And this is an InDesign document, 2018. So I'm going to go to uh, OneDrive South Monterey County Photography 2 and save it in my booklet folder. So now I'm going to click Save. All right, so everything's saved here. Um, this file, again, is located in that folder. So I don't want to move this file from that folder in File Explorer. I also don't want to delete anything in here. I also don't want to rename or move anything in here. I can add photos to this folder, but again, you want to keep everything together and you don't want to move or delete it. All right, it's associative. If I rename this file here or delete it, right, let's just move it from one folder to another folder. All right, so in InDesign, we see this little question mark and it's letting us know that, hey, you know what, your file is missing. If I click on the question mark, it's going to ask me, hey, where is it? And you have to find that file again and click on it and reestablish the link. You can also go to the links panel. So if you go to the links panel, you're going to see a little warning sign that says, hey, the link to this file is missing. If you, again, move your files, rename them or delete them, you cannot print your booklet. You cannot, you know, save it as a PDF. Um, you will not be able to see high resolution versions of your photos. So again, make sure, make sure you do not move, edit, or delete the photos you place in your file. Just keep them in your folders, keep them organized. So I'm going to actually put this back into my folder here. I'm going to put that back in there. All right. I'm going to go back to my file. The warning dialog went away because the original location of this file was established again. And again, if I click on this file in the links panel, right, it'll tell me the path right here. So this is the path. It's my OneDrive South Monterey County folder, Photography 2, Booklet, Version 1. Okay. So when you place a file, again, don't move it around. Leave it in its folder. When you've placed a file, you can do a lot of things to it to kind of put it on the page. Let's say I wanted this to fill my entire document here or the top half. Uh, I could move this picture around and each picture has two components. It has the image and the frame. I'm going to make the frame for this picture bigger. So I'm going to click and drag on this blue outline right here. And then notice when I hover my hand over the middle of the document, right? The picture itself is actually highlighted with this brown outline. And I could click and drag to resize this to fill it, but I'm warping my image. Uh, you don't want to do that. You want to constrain the proportions and make sure you don't warp your image. Uh, if you accidentally mess it up like this, you can hit Control Z to undo. Okay. And if you're not sure if you've warped something, take a look at the links panel and it'll show you the scale. Down here in the scale, 
and the information. If this is off, if this is 14, this is 14.5% 14 by 9.3%, that tells you that the scale is incorrect. Incorrect. So you want to reset that or relink that. Um, and I can't remember the fastest way. Here it is, the drop down menu. So if I go to this drop down menu, I can change it, whoa, to 100%. 100%. Okay, so that just reset our document there. Now it's super big though, because it's 100% scale. Uh, and that's where these buttons in the upper right hand corner come into frame. So you can uh, fit the content to the frame, you can fit the frame to the content, you can fit content proportionately. So I'm going to click on this because basically what that means is it's going to snap my picture to the frame. And then I'm going to click on this button, fill frame proportionately. And that's just going to move this out past the edges of my frame. And those buttons are your best friends. So again, there's the frame, which can hide or show the photo, right? So if I only wanted to show, you know, up to the wall here, I could shrink the frame. And then if I use my hand tool and click on the center of the photo, I can click and drag to position the photo in the frame. When sizing it, again, make sure you hold down shift and click and drag on the edges here to resize it or make sure the proportions are constrained so you can click on this constrain button here and that'll constrain the proportions for you if you accidentally warp an image right reset its settings to you know a concrete 50 percent or 100 percent and then make sure you use the fill frame proportionately uh, to kind of snap it into the frame there okay so that's the basics of placing images. That's the basics of frames. Uh, the next thing you're probably gonna wanna add is a title or text. To do that, switch to your type tool. And to add text, just click and drag. That's gonna make what's called a text box. And you're gonna see a blinking cursor in your text box. So I'm just gonna call this Greenfield. That's the name of my booklet here. To change the font settings, just highlight the text. And then they're all in the top here, so I can change the font from this drop down menu and choose a different font here. Uh, let's choose this. I can make it bigger or smaller with these drop downs. Okay. I can change the alignment over here. It's all pretty straightforward if you've used Microsoft Word before. It's it should be familiar, the button shapes and everything. You don't have to get too detailed. Just make sure you add a title and then add your name. All right, so I'm gonna highlight this text and make it smaller. There we go. So I got a picture and a title and now I can continue to place my images into my booklet. Uh, you could do just about one photo per page you can do multiple photos per page again to place a photo go to file place you can also select multiple photos so if i wanted to select two photos again hold down shift and click on each photo click open and now you see my cursor has a little number two next to it so that just means when i click and drag here right i have the next photo ready to go so i can go over here and click and drag to place two photos in sequence and again I'm not gonna mess around with the frames too much I might you know want these to fill the whole page so I could make that frame bigger and then fit content proportionately to fill that up but I'm not gonna mess around with this too much I kinda want the original ratios and sizes of my photos to stay the same as I go through my photo book here uh, but you're free to play around with that and again, just make sure you place all of your photos into your booklet. Make sure your name and title are on the booklet somewhere. Um, and then, you know, if you want to add text on the pages and titles of the photos, you can do that. All right, so when you're done with your booklet, uh, again, make sure you go to File, Save, save it. And then you're going to export it as a booklet, um, but also as a PDF. So we're going to go to File, Print Booklet, and you're going to see a special pop-up window here. 
and um, you just need to leave it at two up saddle stitch. Uh, and then your printer should be Adobe PDF. So click on print settings. And from the printer drop down here, make sure you choose Adobe PDF. Um, you're going to make sure that it's oriented correctly. So go to the setup. The orientation should be like this, kind of left to right, because that's how our document is set up. And then click OK. And then when you click print, you're going to be prompted to save your file instead of printing it. All right, so I can save my file here. I'm just gonna call it test and click save. I'm in my booklet version one folder, again, where all my practice files are. Click save. Might take a while to save there. And then it should automatically open to kind of show you what it looks like. And if you look at it, right, page one, again, is gonna have your cover and it should have the back cover on the left hand side and then page two would be the next page in your book and so on and so forth. So because this book wasn't finished, it doesn't have all the pages properly set up, but uh, you get the idea.